Back in 2013, State of Decay arrived on the Xbox 360 as an Xbox Live arcade title that broke sales records for the platform. In just over a week following its release, it sold over half a million paid downloads, which was a major milestone at the time. Fast forward five years, and the follow up State of Decay 2 is finally here. It improves on the first in many ways, but maintains that familiar sense of jank, whilst at the same time manages to weave together a whole bunch of systems and regularly results in some pretty heart racing moments. State of Decay fans will feel right at home here. The game isn't a vast departure from the first, but then did it really need to be? I was a huge fan of the original. Despite all of its flaws and issues, it's a genuinely memorable title for me, and it sits fondly in my memories. On one hand, after five years, and what seems like more substantial backing from Microsoft, some people might expect a more major step up. The State of Decay 2 instead plays into the strengths of the first game, doubling down on what worked, and then refining those mechanics into something which just genuinely feels better to play. You'll pick between a handful of survival duos when you start the game, each with their own different backstories, stats and skills. After a short linear tutorial to familiarise yourself with the basic combat and movement mechanics, the game lets you pick from one of three different areas to start in. This choice isn't permanent, but it is most likely the location that you're going to be spending the majority of your playthrough in. The combat's pretty straightforward, there's a single button to perform satisfying melee strikes, and the ranged combat feels solid and there's plenty of gun variation, many of which pack a real punch. Characters progress in their basic skill sets the more you use them, such as melee fighting, shooting, sprinting, etc. It's kind of similar to what you saw in the older Elder Scrolls titles, albeit a little bit more simplified. Max out a skill and then you can choose from two different branching options. These are actually affected by the character themselves. These branching options give different bonuses to stats and occasionally you can unlock new abilities such as slam attacks and jumping strikes. The more you use the character, the stronger they become and the more naturally you begin to feel invested in them. It's a pretty straightforward progression system, but it does work. You can also grab zombies from behind and silently execute them with your knife or throw them, which I found a nice option to have but the stealth isn't really where the game's strength lies. Mowing down hordes of zombies with explosives, shotguns and vehicles however, definitely is. The vehicles handle well, the smaller cars feel nimble, sports cars have a lighter grip, and the trucks have a genuine feeling of weight behind them. Holding your door out to smash zombies as you drive by makes a gleeful return, and your AI partners will even do it automatically as you get close this time. Unfortunately, the vehicles themselves just get stuck way too easily on small objects. This happened to me more times than I can remember. Like seriously. And make sure this doesn't happen to us again. The vehicles are also a source of a range of other bugs. I've been stuck halfway through the floor after getting out of a vehicle. I've seen them rapidly flicker in and out of existence and had them explode seemingly at complete random on near full health with the smallest little tap against an object. That's the spot we're looking for. Abandoned ship! Resource management and gathering is the name of the game in State of Decay 2, much like the first. Your home base relies on various resources such as food, medicine, ammo, construction materials and fuel. Inside all the locations in the game, you'll find a number of search points which you can either slowly search quietly or you can do it faster with the risk of making a loud noise. That loud noise obviously brings nearby zombies straight to you. It's the same risk reward system that you saw in the first game, and it still works here. Having seemingly a straightforward supply run go completely south ended up resulting in some of my favourite and most memorable moments in the game. It often meant that a 5 to 10 minute supply run quickly escalated into a 30 minute skirmish where I was battling for my life, ended up hobbling home with a severely fatigued group and a smoking vehicle which is pretty much ready to blow up. It's those dynamic joining together of these systems that ends up creating some of the best moments in the game, for sure. The base management side of things is a bit more fleshed out than its predecessor. Your home base has a number of small and large slots where you can select and build various rooms. The options available depend on your group's skill set and progression, along with the size of the space available. Building these facilities or performing their actions take up resources, whether it's crafting materials to build the facilities themselves, or just medicine to heal the injured. It's a constant balancing act between your group's needs, the resources you have available, and what you need to achieve. 
The facilities themselves bring bonuses and abilities, but can you really afford the daily upkeep cost to run them? On paper, it sounds like busy work, but actually it's fairly straightforward and satisfying to manage. It adds kind of like an ongoing pressure and repercussions to your actions and decisions, in a way which never actually became frustrating to me. There's no mainline traditional story per se. Instead, State of Decay 2 focuses on the individual characters' own stories and their personalities. Occasionally you'll receive special quests from members of the group, whether that's having to make a tough decision as a sheriff, or just drive a fast car through tons of zombies. These quests are slightly more crafted than the fairly generic side quests, but they struggle to replace the proper story. Whilst I did develop an attachment to some of those characters, that attachment generally came from what I had personally progressed in them, rather than any real personality from the characters themselves. The overall goal in State of Decay 2 is to clear your chosen zone of the Blood Plague, a disease which creates aggressive red-eyed zombies. You have to hunt down these Blood Plague hearts and destroy them. Once completed, the game will allow you to finish your chosen leader's quest goals before leaving your mark on the world, in the form of a legacy pack, which can then be carried over to your next playthrough along with some of your favourite survivors. Think like a new game plus here. It's clearly a game that's meant to be replayed multiple times due to the dynamic nature of the systems at play, and multiple zones to play through. Online co-op also goes a long way in adding not only a whole lot of fun to game, but a lot of replay value. The number one requested feature from the first was co-op, and Undead Labs clearly listened here. Up to four players can team up with drop-in, drop-out co-op, bringing across their characters from over the world. Visually, State of Decay 2 is a massive step up from the first. I tested the game on an Xbox One X, where the game does look damn right great at times. Disappointingly though, even on the X, it does regularly suffer from stuttering and frame rate drops, which, whilst they aren't ideal, they don't necessarily damage the overall gameplay experience too much. On the PC though, the game ran at a solid 60fps at 1080p on ultra settings, when paired with an i5 and a GTX 1070. I couldn't find a high frame rate option to take advantage of my 144Hz monitor sadly, but the performance was very smooth. I even tested it out on a GTX 1050 Ti with another i5 at 1080p where the game sat roughly around 45 to 50 FPS on high settings. I'm sure you could probably squeeze out a fairly solid 60 FPS out of this by adjusting a few settings. I felt that the PC port was reasonably solid, cloud saves worked fantastically between my Xbox and PC, and the decent performance on multiple machines. Sadly, where State of Decay 2 is really let down is with the bugs, oh those bugs. Coming from the first game I expected some jank, but I was kinda hoping that with the fairly long dev cycle and the stronger backing from Microsoft that the team would have smoothed things out. Disappointingly though, the game is incredibly buggy. Outside of the myriad of vehicle bugs I mentioned earlier, I've had some really hilarious ones and also downright game breaking ones when playing our pre-release version, which granted, these might be solved by the time you get around to playing. Zombies spawn in midair in front of you and drop to the ground when driving at speeds. Sometimes grass seems to render in way too late. I've also had to restart the game after I've lost control over my character. The HUD has vanished on me randomly, forcing a restart to fix. But the most egregious bug that I have experienced was after clearing the full area of the Blood Plague. The game then indicated that I was going to receive further leader quests to finish my leader's storyline and receive the leader packs. However, after I spent hours driving around doing various side quests, I'm still yet to see any more leader quests appear in over three hours potentially even longer. This means that I've just been driving around randomly, almost aimlessly at this point. The result is that this specific save, I seem to be unable to actually finish the game and receive my legacy bonuses for future playthroughs. It's really disappointing. State of Decay 2 though is a whole lot of fun. Familiar fun, sure. It still has equal amounts of jank as its predecessor, if not more, at times. But Undead Labs have crafted a sandbox that's truly entertaining, with systems that intermingle in wonderful ways. It's even less of a tailored experience than the first though. The developers definitely lean further into handing over the tools and just letting you run wild. Much like the first, it is a diamond in the rough. I've had a blast playing it and I can't wait to play more, especially with others. Whilst at times it becomes difficult to ignore the range of bugs, the gameplay itself is addictive and enjoyable throughout. I kind of often overlook those levels of jank on display there. Undead Labs have something that's pretty special with State of Decay. A survival series that ignores the modern tropes often seen in recent survival titles. Something which genuinely feels like a zombie apocalypse simulator. Sure, as the second iteration it probably should be a lot more polished, but man have I had a blast playing it. <laughs>